What's up, everybody? Marcus and Santos back for another episode of Disc Golf Amateur Hour, the season of Marcus. Santos, how are you? Doing good. How are you? Doing good. Where are we at? Three, two, three, 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 four. There's a number out there. I believe right? 33, thirty-three. I think. All right. Thirty. Thirty. Somebody else reached thirty. Why? Hashtag Why Sully? Why Sully? He hit his thirty, I think. Anywho, yeah. Um, not much going on, on the personal front, but yeah, let's talk about. It. Let's just hop into what happened last week. Um, yeah, huge news. I won league again. Uh, it was a great huge. week. <laughs> biggest biggest thing happening in disc golf was me winning leagues back to back weeks in singles, not even double. I didn't get carried. Oh, I thought it was doubles. When you no, said I've it. won singles oh, the last two weeks. I've won, I've won tags. I defended my four tag this week. And this one is this one you shared in the chat where you had like a bogey and you were just like four down from the front yeah, line. Was, or something? Yeah, I was. I, w- I was down by five after twelve holes and came back and won. That is actually really good news, and that kind of I know uh, segues into what happened in the pros too, because that shit got real tight after. Yeah, a huge lead from Ricky. Yeah. Um, I didn't play league. I didn't do anything this week. I had uh, took off the little uh, glamping with Christina. Oh, so nice. there was actually no disc golf this weekend. I did putt because it was necessary. I got those new putters. Yeah. And I just right. want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm actually going back and forth between the Lunars and the 4S. Okay. Because from distance, I actually like the Lunars from C2. Oh. Because the miss and the bang doesn't fall very far. Yeah. Yeah. You they just me? fold. Like up. it folds yep. and falls. And yep. even when I had one hit the top and try to roll, it just like died immediately. Yeah. So, yeah. Trying to work on that um, forcefully putting it in, not just trying to drop it in, you know, from right, a distance. Right. Right. Like trying 20, to drive it in there. Yeah. 15. Drive it in and then took that further and further out. And then I felt like, for now at least, those lunars from distance. Really, like I think I said this last week. Like when you fail, you fail quietly. This yeah. is like hardly a sound. Yeah, it folds and drops. So, um, yeah, let's get into what we saw. Uh, at least on the men's side, eleven nineteen. Did you say you looked yeah, it up? Yeah, right? Rick shot an eleven nineteen rated round, which is fire rated round, third highest round of all time. Yeah, I believe the third highest rated round of all time. So, pretty good. It was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty cool to watch. Uh, I'm. I think it was Jak- Jakob Semerad who who started five for five. Yeah, but he ended up kind of like even or you know yeah. middling kind of yeah. the rest of the way. And uh, Ricky was on a heater. What not eight through nine? Anyways, he was on a heater. Like it was that. great yeah. to watch. It's, you like to all see stuff like that. Yeah, you do. Um, it's it's really fun to watch the sport be played really well. And I I hold that opinion for every sport. Like you know, people hate on Tiger Woods because he was young and he was flashy. But it was cool. People hate on LeBron. But it's really fun to watch. It's fun to watch someone dominate a sport in any yeah. way. And to me, the course wasn't that crazy difficult from what I saw the pros like carving it up. It was just yeah. a bad limb or kick or something here and there and making a couple of putts. And yeah. It was really nice to see him do that and, and see the hot rounds coming after that at uh, 10, 11 down, 12 down. Mm hmm. And, and by day three, we had a good old fashioned Ricky versus Paul throwdown. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's and been a while. I remember uh, the commentator asking, "Is it Mc, like how many in a row before you call it McBeast mode?" Right. Do you? What do you? What, what's your? What's your thought on that? How many do you think he has to? Does he go five or six in a row? And you're like, okay, yeah, it's like it's like six in a what's row. On, six in a row on moving day, and that's when you're like, oh, okay, Paul. Like six six in a row early in the round on moving day, and you're like, oh, okay, Paul's trying to do something today. Okay, all right. I, I, I thought they gave it a higher number when they were talking about it, but I was like, no, you can see this guy's locked in. Yeah, this is gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, and I don't know. Do you buy Ricky Ricky's story on? Sunday of uh, not necessarily an injury, but something was tweaked or he slept on something oh, wrong. Yeah, he said he hurt. He said he had like a, a dislocated rib. He, he, he used a weird word. It wasn't dislocated, but it made me think he had a dislocated rib. I don't remember what. Right. He, he used a word that wasn't like something I've heard used before. I can't remember what he said on his Which Instagram. Which is obviously I'm not calling Ricky a liar. I just know. I remember what he said just in the same way. And I'm like, I don't really, I, I don't know what that is. I don't. 
Yeah, it was a weird. Like, weird you slept phrase. wrong, or or you partied because you thought you had a lead and you were good to go, and then you weren't. Yeah, uh, which is easy to do with that atmosphere, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's a big. It, it's a big party event. It feels. It seems like from. It, yeah. Looking out. Looking outside in. Does you, like my subscription level? I think what I thought was pro for DGN or whatever, but I didn't have access to the. Uh, what was that? It wasn't like it was like an all star type event where they had the accuracy and they had all the other stuff. Oh yeah, I for I did I didn't even know what was happening, so I had no idea. I was getting messages on like X or you know updates from other apps saying check these mean, shots out. Look, you Eagle, mean X look the at... everything app? <laughs> I mean, well, everything is going to be called X if you leave it up to him. He keeps buying shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I didn't have that kind of access to it, so I didn't yeah, see that didn't part. Either. But what I did see was a lot of really cool introductions and an atmosphere that was like, bar none, the best I've ever seen for disc golf. Like yeah. this was like a global setting, so like kind of tied in for what I'm seeing right now with the Olympics. Yeah, it's like this. This is like these are these are true athletes coming out, putting on a show. They're announcing them. Everything was awesome, and to me, I feel like. I feel like it put like the U.S. tourneys to shame, like the majors in the U.S. to shame, like especially worlds in the U.S. Yeah. Right. Every once in a while you have some guy with a megaphone or a guy shouting really loud or a speaker box that'll do the announcements for your lead cards or your, right. you know, co-lead cards, the chase card, whatever they want to call them. But that's it. Like the introductions don't meet. Uh, you saw the ceremony like. Yeah. Like the big the, stadium like, where they walked out and the awards, yeah. like the podium. Yeah, which uh, yeah. that's what tied the Olympics for me. Like, that is really cool. And I get uh, kind of the travel aspect of things. There are some pros who immediately finish their round. And if they know, all right, I'm third, I'm not winning, they're gone. They're, they're, gone they're hitting the next road event. And yeah. the next one, right? They're not sticking around for a podium photo or something like that. But as an amateur, as someone who watches and consumes a lot of disc golf, I thought, That'd be really cool to see. Maybe not at every event, obviously, but at the majors, certainly. At the majors, at yeah. World, hundred percent. You should have something like that. Yeah. Um, but what was your take on on when you saw all that? Were you yeah. aware of it? Well, like I've seen Estonia do this before, but not on this kind of setting. Yeah, it's always every European event. So they don't get a ton of broadcasted events. So as compared to the U.S. tour. So it's, they kind of have more fanfare about them. You know, the European Open is a huge event. It's a ton of fanfare. Um, like this, the, what was this, the Estonia, like, I heard the, what, what was the name of the event? I don't remember. It was like ES something. I don't, I can't remember the name of the event. I but, don't remember it either. Let me find out right now. Which is a shame. It, it was, was such a, a very... Good event. Because when I was looking on Disc Golf Network, it wasn't one of the title right. events at the top that you would click on. It was just one of those a video video that you were available to see right away. Yeah. Um, but they they, wanted, but... they just put in so much effort, um, you know. And I don't know how they're doing it. Um, whether they're just getting big title sponsors and big event sponsors to. Um, fund a lot of this or if funding is more reasonable in Europe to to acquire the stadium you know that big stadium setting they used um, if it's just you know if the municipalities and cities and governments just care more about niche sports because I saw the ticket prices and the ticket prices were like 15 bucks a day maybe um, Are you serious? Yeah, that's why there was a huge gallery on a Friday afternoon. Holy cow! Yeah, tickets were like it was like fifteen bucks a day or less, and I th- it would, the prices I saw were all in euros. So I'm just I'm estimating right. what, I, what I remember them yeah. being. In they were like fifteen. It was like fifteen euros, like twenty bucks. Yeah, it was like it was literally like 50, ten or fifteen euros a a day. Yeah, and then like the most expensive thing was a three day VIP pass was sixty euros got to be title sponsors got to be the so they must be getting a lot could even be the host country because of what right kristen has been doing right like she's sponsored by porsche of stony like yeah it's amazing um yeah the name the name of it was european disc golf festival 
festival. There was an F in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was trying to figure out. It was a festival. Um, and, yes. it, and it and it played like that, right? Yeah. Like the entire Seems environment. Like it. it looked amazing. It looked fun. Um, surprising somewhat that Tatar's finished, but I kind of feel like it was because she was at home and so available everywhere all the time. Yeah. Like she couldn't shut it down, right? She was right. there taking pictures, autographs. She was celebrating. She was out in front of everyone. And other people had the time to just focus on disc golf, and that's all. So I'm not going to yeah. give her an excuse, but to me, I saw her everywhere except the leaderboard. And that, yeah. that's all I can come up with for someone yeah. who's dominated the way she has. I, again, I did, didn't even know she was back playing already. Um, I thought she was still out hurt. I didn't realize she was even back until, what, last week? Um, or whenever. Right? She played last the, week. She, yeah, she played she last played, week. She, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's like I she just like won, right? She won, yeah. And I, sure. I didn't even I didn't even know she was playing that. I I hadn't heard okay. anything, and it was just like oh, all of a sudden Kristen won the event. I was like oh oh okay she's back. So I so she was actually back for the for the Krokel Open. Oh, for Krokel, okay. Because she won that, then she won oh. the European Open, which that's what actually we you and I talked about. Yeah, we talked you about it. Yeah. But she came back like, holy shit. Yeah. And then uh, here you go with the uh, European Dispatch came in eighth. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, that that's just, you can't win them all, right? You, she wins a lot of them. You're not right. going to win all of them, all of them. Someone else is going to have a good day eventually. Right. Uh, actually, it was a good prize for the women there. Missy Gannon took home $4,200. Okay. Pretty good, yeah. There's that, so that many more men competitors. Pay-out. Yeah, there's just more. Way more. And this is just looking at the pay and not, not you know the cut line or whatever, but there's right. just so much. Um but yeah, so overall, I think we kind of share this opinion of that festival being pretty amazing and it'd be nice to see something like that here. Oh um, yeah. I mean USDGC yeah. is kinda like that. Um as far as like all the, yes. the vendors, the spectators, you know, but it's just it's getting so expensive. You know, I talked to the guys around here that have been here and going to USDGC for 15 years and they're telling, they're talking about like, they don't want to go anymore because it's just so expensive and ridiculous now. Like they used to just drive down camp for the week. Like they just pitch a tent at Winthrop and camp for the week and watch the event as it happened. And now you have to pay $200 for a weekend pass or $250 for a week, a weekend pass and find, and then find lodging. And it's just kind of a crazy USDGC Gold Pass, only 200 available. For $249, you get a four-day access to yep. all eight rounds, access to the nightly, fresh, and now evening concert series in Championship Village, access to the Gold Pass hospitality area in Championship Village with a dedicated restroom, four meal vouchers, redeemable at any of the food vendors on site, $15 each. What kind of meal does that buy you these days? Fries and a drink? Yeah, especially from like Complimentary, a vendor. Complimentary, non-alcoholic drinks and Gold Pass hospitality suite, premium parking, and championship Gold Pass laminated credential. So, let's just dive in there just a little bit. Yeah. Why is is this is this a money grab? One, or is this we really want this to grow and we need this money? to grow and get the attention of possible sponsors because like chess.com, right? They sponsored the yeah, event. That was cool. Um, Ford in Europe sponsors that, that Ford president's sponsors cup. the president's cup. Yep. Right. Um, you've got sponsors. You've got, like I was saying about Tatar, she got Porsche sponsoring her. Um, Paul Macbeth has some good sponsors, uh, but it's not, you know, it's not grown. It's not widely available to other players. No. So is this how they're doing it? Where where the fans are going to have to foot the bill for a while? Like, what is your thought? Why so much? Why so expensive? Um. So I think it's so expensive. I think they just think they can get away with it. Like, I just think the, the money grab. That's what the, I'm saying. The, like, I, yeah. Like, I think the pro tour thinks people will pay for it and. 
you know, I see comments every year like, oh, man, why is no one at DDO? Or, man, there was no one at Worlds this year. Well, because those passes were ridiculous that year. You know, mm-hmm. the crowd used to be like, why is the crowd used to be so much bigger? Well, because the passes used to be able to just walk into the event. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't have to. So, this year for Ledgestone, you could, even if you were a player, you, you had to get spectator passes if you wanted to go watch that. The pros. When, really? when we went to Ledgestone, we just kind of went and as watched. As a player, you had a player as a pass. As a player, you had anyway. a player pass. Yeah. You just went and hung out. So you can't even do that anymore. No you, money you grab. Just, and that that launched another whole you know Nate Heinold issue. But we can. <laughs> oh man! So I, when I say money grab, I don't want people who are watching this to say, "Oh, he's talking about people being greedy and pocketing." No, just no. They're not. They're not trying to balance the line between affordability and bringing in and making it available to the people who help get them to where they are now. Exactly. That's what I mean. And, and obviously, you explained it better when you said it's because they can, because someone's going to pay that price for those. Someone tickets. will, yeah, but not enough people are. So it looks. So visually, it looks like no one's there. It I'm going to terrible. click on buy now and see if it says how many are available. Oh yeah. Um, oh my God! There is a three hundred and ninety nine dollar private yurt rental. Yes, they did open those. I saw that. That's at where? Where is that? That's at Ledgestone. No, that's USDG. That's USDGC. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I, I guess I would have seen that in local. They pages. have the two forty nine gold pass, the three ninety nine private yurt rental, but they do have a. Um. $89 throw pink difference maker VIP. They have a what does that get you? USDGC VIP pass for $89. What, what does that get And they have you? just this, uh they have a they have a standard day pass, 15 to 25 bucks depending on the day you show up. Just a day pass okay, to show so up that, and follow. Okay, so that's that, affordable. that's reasonable. That's reasonable. It's not can... telling me what was available for those passes. Mm-hmm. It was just adding them to the cart. So I'm going to see if I can find anything else about those passes. Uh, while you're looking that up, I was scrolling Reddit and someone had a question about um, something to do with Ledgestone and like where you could get passes. And someone, the first, there was like one comment and it was like, um, it was just a hyperlink. It was dateheinoldsuckshairyballs.com. I was like, but and then, and then he had, then, then he linked the actual Ledgestone website. But I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Okay, it, it was All pretty right. funny. Yeah. Definitely no fan of Heinold. We've had our our history with him. Um, just you know, whatever. Just don't like. But uh, you know, he got to a position where he's at by playing the game. So yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, and they're so really. The... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll save mine. All right, the the day the VIP pass, not the day yeah. pass, the VIP. You get the four day pass. Uh, this one is eighty nine dollars now. The price went down. It was a hundred now. Too. Okay. Four day pass, access to the nightly fresh and now evening concert series, free access to the eighteen hole USDDC spectator course, and nine hole Ace Place course. Convenient on course parking, and a commemorative laminate credential. What does that mean? Free access to the 18 hole USDGC spectator course. It just just means you, you get to play. You get to play a different course. You, you Spectators like get their own Meadows. course set up. I mean, if you're making a trip, then that seems cool, right? Yeah. I did see a different tournament that was raising funds for the tournament by letting people play the pro layout, right? With tea times. Yeah, and, and that th- there was discounted fine. times or like sunset times because you may not finish yeah. the round. I think I that's like that. Plenty reasonable. Uh, your day pass gets you access to any single day, access to nightly, fresh, and now evening concert series, free access to the eighteen holes course, and uh, free parking adjacent to the spectator course. <laughs> um, okay. yeah. So, all right. Well, um, I'm not saying this is thrown in, but I am saying in the past. We're going to be throwing that USDGC dubs and the winner automatically goes down to play. And in the previous player packs for them, they've had passes 
to watch the uh, the event. So mm-hmm. it's a possibility. Uh, the event's up. If you have any questions, message us. Yeah. Um, it's at Como. So registration is live. All right. And for all my South Carolina friends, I got an event the same weekend down here. Uh, Upstate Team Championship, which I am... I just went to the course yesterday. Me and a friend of mine went out to play it. He had he hadn't been there yet, and he's I'm borrowing a bunch of tools from him to do course maintenance. And he's like, "Well, we'll go out there. I'll check it out because he used to own a landscaping business. So he's like, "I'll just go check it out and see what you need, and I'll, I'll wow. then you then you can pick it up." So I, so I went and picked it up from him today because uh, he can't. He's going to be out of town this weekend when I'm going to do the maintenance, but I'm trying to gather some troops to go so I don't have to do it all myself. But that's just nice. Like, couple trees to a couple of fallen trees to cut up and some grass to trim and shouldn't be you know maybe one day of work maybe an all day saturday depending on how many people i have show up but when you say grass to trim are we saying you can't just ask the parks to mow it or are you saying like tall this grass is, areas that you this is the private make? property so i i need to get their mower okay Which, they have a mower he told me he hit something with it about three weeks ago and i haven't followed up to see if the mower's fixed yet i'm bitch okay yeah all right <laughs> He hit a stump or something, he said. So I got to see if the mower's That's fixed. Nuts. But I've got, you know, weed eaters and Tools. some okay. other some other big, like, hedge, like those those bush trimmers that, like, you shape bushes with. So I can just whack through a bunch of stuff with those. Nice. So that'll be good. I'm excited for that. Um, I think I finally got my team figured out. <laughs> Talking with, with my buddy That's who's – Because the, the same friend, uh, Chad, thought he was going to be out of town or thought he was going to be busy with something. Because his wife and mother are going to be out of town, but apparently they're taking the kids. So Chad and his brother are free to come play on our team. So, boom. Now I've got a team. Is it a four person? Four person team, yeah. And then our, we got one okay. more. We got our forehand specialist. He's got like a 440 foot, just like laser. Left or right? right? Right hand, forehand, just rope, forehand. Okay. I know we've said this before. We don't have to get in depth, but I feel like a lefty is what you need. But um, your lefty shot versus a forehand shot from a righty, do you have different endings, I guess you say, for the flights? Um, the flight, whatever. I yeah. just feel like it. This yeah. I mean, you get different shots with it. Like, you know, a, a turnover that holds is going to be easier on certain lines with a forehand because you get a little more angle on it easier. Okay. Things like that. I mean, overall, um, if you're hitting gaps, I, from what I hear, it's if you have a forehand and you can go that route, it's easier to hit the gap with a forehand. Yeah, because you're, you're looking, looking at, at it. it. Yeah. And it'll so, be good because the two, me and Zach, Zach's our other forehand specialist. He's, uh, we're rated close to each other, and then Chad and his brother Brody are both going to be rated lower than us, so we're going to be playing probably the lower division, but then Zach and I won't be on the same team for doubles, so that everyone gets a lefty, basically, there you go. Ready for doubles. The way it should be. So yep. it'll be good. Nice. Um, actually, yeah, uh, let's segue that into a couple of things that we, we're going to talk about today, like the main course. Um, the Olympics are happening right now. We brought those up. And in the past, um, we've seen the President's Club uh, Cup. Yeah. To me, it's a fun kind of gimmicky. They play only nine holes. They try to make a day of it because they're out there. But it's not really a competition. I mean, the U.S. has like basically won like the last ten, right? Like, it's a strong team. What are you going to do? Um, but with the Olympics being there, it and the sports coming in and out of the Olympics all the time, would it be cool to see the Olympics? A, um, would it be cool to see disc golf in the Olympics? Uh, B, is the U.S. just going to run it like the President's Club or Cup, and and then it's not fun to watch? Yeah, so it a would be awesome for for uh, exposure to see the disc golf to see disc golf in the Olympics. Even if it was just a recap of, uh, even if it was a recap every day of a three day event or something, would be awesome. Would be so good for exposure. Um, but to your second point, yes, it would just be the same guys competing. It'd be the same guys at the top. It wouldn't be any different than a regular weekend. It would just be who could travel to where the Olympics are that year. With no, because all these, like, all these teams, all these Olympic teams and country teams have funding in some way through their, through their programs. Like, like the U.S. US Gymnastics is a top to bottom youth to professional program. Mm -hmm. So they, they have funding. They, they have a full program of funding, you know, 
um, U.S. Golf has a full program, top to bottom, of players from youth to professionals that are being that have development and funding to travel. Whereas disc golf is just Joe Blow and his sponsor. So, a couple of things about that because I'm I'm reading more and more people uh, on the socials who are saying. Back when uh, the Dream Team was there, they faced, like, four NBA players. And that's why they beat everyone, right? No, yeah. they beat everyone because you had literally the greatest of all time to ever do it with one of the greatest point guards in Magic, one of the greatest forwards, shooting forwards. Larry, but, like, they yeah. were just the greatest, right? So that's why. Like, I'm old enough. I saw it. That's why I can speak to it. I saw that one. I saw this one. Yeah. I'm not going to debate. I still say the original Dream Team wins. But – you fast forward to today, and they're playing something like, I don't know, 60 NBA players across other countries. Yeah. Right? So, like, it kind of yeah. spread it. And then those other countries, which they're getting closer, right? Because it's a oh, country yeah. program the way you say it is. Yeah. It's a country program built up where those countries, those players, they play together year-round, and they tour, and they practice where the U.S. team is just a bunch of all-stars. They slap together a month before the Olympics. Yeah. They got to learn to play with each other, right? So I guess it would, to me, depend on more of the format. Uh, yeah, the U.S. would probably smack them around for the first couple, but you could still make a competitive uh, team. I guess it can't be USA versus World, so no, it, it, has be country. To be USA, it has to be country. Each country. Yeah. So each country, you might have Simon going you for might, Germany you might have or to, Canada. Yeah, but you you would need to limit it to four players per team and make it a team event or something so that it's not just outright strokes to make it even viable. Right, which uh, brings us to the next part of it is the format. Yeah. Now, we've, we've played in some team formats. Yeah. Kind of like the way it works. You have a single, you have a double, and then you have like a best. Some sort right? of course. Yeah, team. team. Um, yeah. But to make it uh, to where you have to actually have these countries, you still got to whittle them down, right? You got to have yeah. a semi or semifinal or, you know, whatever, a quarterfinal, whatever you got to do to narrow it down, right? But to me, the most, in my opinion, the most competitive way of doing it is the individual strokes. It is the doubles, but not always best shot. Alternate shot really makes a difference. Could, I think the college format would probably work pretty well for... Refresh real quick. Yeah, the college, college format, format for people who haven't watched because we never posted the back nine. Yeah, the college format is two is one team of four split into two teams of two, two pairings of two, playing best alternate shot doubles. So team A throws their two shots, team B chooses which one of those two shots to play, and then team B plays from that lie, then team A chooses the best shot of team B's and plays two shots from that lie, and so on until you complete a hole. Okay. Um, I personally think that that is harder to play because you really may not putt oh, for, yeah. hours. you know, 45 minutes, an hour. Um and that's a real thing. So uh, I, I think that's an equalizer. I think it plays into it. But I, I like the individual uh, aspect of like a doubles alternate shot where no matter what, you just got to make up for your partner's drive, yeah. a bad shot. They tried something. You don't have someone to save you, right? At least for one of the rounds yeah. to kind of bring people back to earth and then – I don't like the idea of having pros that have more than, say, three people throwing the best shot. Like, think about the four top U.S. players. Yeah. And you give three of them a chance, you're probably going to have know. an ace every other hole, right? It's yeah. just sick. Well, and that, that's why we do alternate tee shot quads in my event, in Jimmy's event. is because So the tee shot has a lot of pressure on it, and then you get best shot from there to try and complete the hole. I still remember my fail at 14. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so, doesn't I matter. Mean, there's so much strategy in that. And now I yeah. so I played the course with Chad yesterday, and we were I was just talking about it. I was like, man, I don't know what holes I'm going to want to take. Cause there's some easy lefty hyzers, but there are some lefty holes that I am terrible at. Like Really? 17, 17 down the stretch is like a 250-foot lefty hyzer. It's like kind of a – but it's just kind of – it's pinched in just, just a weird way that gets in my head, and I shank it. I saw it off 
every time I play the hole. You know, I got to say, I, I I don't have enough lefties to compare, but I have played with a few lefties or people with a forehand who play something a little different. And sometimes your decision-making is questionable in, in the shot that you – like, I can't speak to a specific hole right now. I just brought up, like, a memory of, like, why do you throw it like that? Like, I've seen another lefty, like, Matt or someone else do something different. Yeah. Like, it's because – that's the shot. Like, that's all I see. That's the way I see it. Yeah. That's the way I'm going to throw it. So maybe have another lefty out there with you and see how they see it and see if they can do it. Yeah. Then, uh-huh. Right. Yeah. All right. No, so that makes sense. <laughs> if you have something of the Olympics, you have something like what we were just talking about at Estonia with the fair festival, whatever. Um, word was out there in the socials for a little while about a manufacturer's cup. Yeah. Like, how that... cool would that be? Right. Yeah. So, all these U.S. players would crush other countries, but what happens when you put them against each other? An actual, yeah. true manufacturer's cup. And how would we? How what's what's your dream scenario of how many people? Because realistically, what do you have? I mean, you got over a dozen manufacturers that could technically qualify, having a touring pro or two. But what kind of a uh, actual format would make sense to you to make it competitive? And so, do you still allow people who are allowed to throw more than one? Like, uh, say, an infinite pro. Let me pull up. Someone on Reddit actually does this. They do Formula One style standings um, for sponsorship. Someone on Reddit compiles this list. And unfortunately... Come on. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, um, took paternity leave from his unpaid job of updating our standings so he hasn't posted in about 100 days um but this is really cool and this is so much data um and because it, it it's based on the on f1 on formula one point standings and stuff yes um oh this is for each event oh okay Scoring is based on Formula One point system. 25 for first, 18 for second, 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 1. And any ties are split like payout at a PDG event would be. So if you tied for, say, the last two spots, it would split 1.5 each instead of 2 and 1. Which is really cool. But that, so this would be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it would only pay points for the top 10 players so only okay. the top 10 players would, would score points for their manufacturer so it he's and the, there's a whole breakdown of who is you know first second third how many points they've accumulated per event but that's treating them because it, just like formula one you have a quote-unquote team, team yeah but you will actually see teammates that dislike each other more than they yeah. do other drivers. Yeah. Because they want to be the number one driver for their team and they ain't getting out of the way and they're not playing nice when somebody right. on the radio says, let them buy. So yeah. In, in a environment where it is just singles like that, that might work. But if you're trying to do a true manufacturer's cup, Oh, so they, they this guy actually does allows have manufacturers for partners. Too. <laughs> he does have, wow. he, actually, he actually, he has it broken down by manufacturers after, uh, X number of after Texas States, after Jonesboro, and after Music City. And cool. so, what I thought initially when I when we wanted to talk about this was you can just easily look up who's ranked what, and yeah. you know kind of see where they are, right? But we got to remember, uh, Kristen hurt her rib. Yep, Kristen was out for a while; she didn't play. Uh Owen has been in, skipped the Euro trip, yep. right? So there's other factors that go into what these people are, are doing, how many they've played, and some of them are really grinding for the points so they can qualify at the end of the year, Yeah, right? Some of them know they only have to play the four majors, six others, and they're good. That's in their contract or whatever, right? So I'm actually looking... Uh, as of July 24th, world rankings, um, Gannon Burr is number one. Okay. That's Discmania. Yep. And right? has, Discmania has 
in this guy's standings after after the last thing after M Music City Open. Um, in points, Discmania has 125. No. Which one is it? No. Oh, it flipped. No, oh, it flipped after Music City. So this is after Texas States, then Jonesboro, then Music City. So it flipped somewhere in there where Dismania was winning after after the Texas State Dismania was winning. Jonesboro, Discraft jumped, oh, jumped them. And then Music City Open, Discraft pulled ahead by a lot. How many do you think, do you think just from based on history and stuff that we've seen, do you think a format of like four players representing a team is enough to give some of the lesser, I, I think four lesser is manufacturers plenty, yeah. they can't afford. Right. So yeah. you got Ganon Burr, who's ranked number one right now. Currently yep. you got Kyle Klein. He's ranked six. He's this yep. mania. Nicholas Antila is nine. And I don't see another Babcock. trying to find someone still. In I'm at 20 right now. I would guess Babcock is next. He had a decent season for him. I'm, I, if I, I don't know every single person that is sponsored by them. Um, I yeah, Gavin is thirtieth. I guess. Yeah, that would make sense. I I I don't know. Or or uh, who's Semarad? Oh, he's by. latitude. He, he might be. He's on okay. latitude. So there goes your four for them, and then you got. Ranked number two in the world right now, grinding is Ricky Waisaki. Yeah. So does Ricky get a West Side team? Uh, I'm sorry, he's that's... dynamic disc, and then West Side gets one, or does he go straight right. through? Really well, so that's what you you have to decide is, and then is House of Discs its own thing because it's like, oh, because they they got Discmania underneath their roof I now, know. so I, I I don't think House of Discs could be a thing. I think it has to be the original. Yeah. So then you'd have to say trilogy, Ricky's right? just dynamic. And then Matteo is just West Side. So uh, well, then, how many people on West Side would be able to compete if they don't allow for the trilogy? I don't know. Yeah, that's tough. Calvin Heinberg. All right, he is in a. Let's see, Isaac Robinson. If you know, they're still going to be around. Stays around. Yeah, um, but let's see, Matteo. Who can help Matteo? Um, no neither. one. No one. Calvin Heinberg. Who can help you? Um, Kevin Jones now. Who, who's Joel Freeman? Joel Freeman's on Innova. Right. There you go. He's 14. But then you have the guys that are sponsored by Innova and Infinite. And, and... That's what I meant. Infinite is... I don't think they could field... Actually, I think they could field, they could a, field team a team. If they follow the format of a certain percentage of that bag being Infinite, yeah. right? Yeah. What do they say? 60, 70% has to be I Infinite? Yeah, I don't know what it is for the top pros. Surprisingly, I thought Discraft would dominate this. No, it's really just Anthony. Um, oh, Paul Paul's McBeth is seven. Yeah. Anthony is eight. Uh, Chris Dickerson is ten. And then MVP, you Gossage. got Simon and Eagle at eleven, twelve. Yeah. Conrad somewhere. You would in have there. them with JC. Yeah. Right? Who's their fourth? Landon. The what is he now? 12, 13? He's like, he's like 11, 12, right. yeah. Um, wow, I don't, I can't, I can't even think of a fourth. PBW, shout out to you, you'll shout be the fourth. To Time to step it up. <laughs> That's really it. So, this is actually fun. You have Gannon Burr teaming up with. The next person in line was Kyle Klein. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a pretty decent duo. Yeah, that'd be cool, right? And let's say they're going up against Paul McBeth and AB. Yeah, that's a, it's, and pretty, then it's pretty fun you, to watch. Then you had Simon and Eagle in dubs against those guys. Yep. And then you have Calvin and Kevin Jones or Joel Freeman. Uh, any I of them? Would you? Who would you? Who would you pick to go with? I wouldn't pick Kevin Jones. Kevin, yeah. I don't know. I don't know who I would oh, pick. Oh, man. It would be interesting. It, it, it's always a neat concept. Um, it is. I think, there, I think there is space for that, but 
Problem is, is there space for that somewhere in the season? You know, season's already jammed, and they're traveling. So Get rid of much. that All Star. You could it re, you could replace All Star with a Manufacturers Cup would be really cool. Or alternate like you do with the Presidents Club, and yeah. you know, yep, yep. Um, Presidents Cup. I think it was following ball golf. Yeah, ball golf did every two years. Um, mm-hmm. It's called the Presidents Cup, and I forgot the other one right now. It escapes me, but that's how they do it. So yeah, you can do an All Star for the everyone. Rider, Just even the, the best solo, the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do a solo all star one year mm-hmm. and the following year just it's the manufacturer, so it's a team event. Yeah. So you can just no, alternate that cool. and, and move that around. Right. I think that's a pretty neat idea. <laughs> and I think as long as you keep it in a warm environment, yeah. Maybe a month ahead of the season. Yeah. Let them warm up, get ready, right? Yeah. I mean a lot of them start warming up in February. That that's that's when they yeah. moved chess dot com to because they took over Vegas LVC spot yeah. in the third week. Yeah. So the second week of February used to be the All Star or in, the one in Arizona. One, yeah. At, at Memorial. That was after and... Memorial. Yeah. So in that time frame, I think yeah. it would be cool. But I'm not leaving the ladies out, so we're gonna. For, they're, they're, it's a numbers game. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's like a numbers game. Yep. They they only had a couple people representing. Yeah. So. Missy and uh, Paige. Paige Pierce. Yeah. Right? Or Holland Hanley and Missy. Or Holland is pretty good, yeah. Right? Because she's she's doing good. Um, so you have Kristen. She's lat 64, but you give her trilogy. Well, a... Yeah, if you were to give her trilogy, then you give her who? Um... No, because that's she's on Clash. Who's yeah? Who's um? Is it Hannah or Heidi? Heidi Line on is on Clash. Hannah is on Innova. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Innova has would have Henna and Evelina, so they would have a decent that's a good one. team. Yeah. Um, MVP would have a decent team. Um, if you're doing two, MVP would have a good team with Onikin and I know they have someone else. I can't remember. Who? Onikin Steen. MVP? Yeah. Um, the girl who just keeps winning. Yeah. We just talked about her. No, not, 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 not Onikin. Um, um, the, girl, the girl that was just uh, Silva Saarinen. Oh, Silva Saarinen. Yes, that's right. I yeah. Know, I, I get them. Confused. She's crushing. Yeah. All right, let's see. What do we got here? It's harder to see who's sponsored by who without a logo right next to the picture. <laughs> yeah, I tried putting Lat sixty four the FPO team, but Lat sixty four team team structure announcement. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's still not a not great uh, uh, media management. How much could herself. she carry? Yeah, there isn't. Team sixty four. Who's that? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, Cy World is champion. on West Side. You have Grand. Oh, Rebecca Cox. Oh, yeah, Rebecca. Jesus. How did we not know that? Wow. Um, And Heidi Tati? Heidi Tati, yeah. That's who you have, basically. For it. For, for, it. for the ladies. Yeah. But, um... If you're doing the trilogy thing to help Ricky, the mm-hmm. trilogy, you have Matty O, Albert Tom. That's, Albert pr- that's Tom, a pretty good yeah. ad right there. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay. But maybe if that this helps. event exists, it pushes the manufacturers to sign more players and put more effort into signing more players to well, try and bolster their rosters. Didn't work out so well for Prodigy. Nothing worked out well for Prodigy. That's rough. Something could be. They were restructuring contracts. They're not totally the bad guys. They tried to sue an 18-year-old and his mom to stick around. Yeah. Um, Only to let KJ out and um, yeah, Lionel but out. What I've seen is they were probably losing money on Kevin. They were probably paying him more than they were getting back. 
they invested in Kevin as their primary oh, yeah. last year. I mean, his reverb, they were letting him do his own line. Yeah. And then just, boom. I guess that line died, right? I guess. Yeah. His line wasn't selling what they thought it would, and there yeah. it went. But um, I, think they're, I think they're actually good discs. The distortions so are good disc. The reverb's a good I disc. I think they're just retooling them and getting ready to remarket them Probably. for the Robinson Brothers. That's yeah. all they're going to do is put all their money into that basket because yep. you never know how much they're going to get offered from someone else who can move discs for them. I know. And that's the name of the game. Let's face it. If yep. you're not moving discs, not moving what are discs. you doing? Yeah, it's not it's not the same as Climo selling his autograph to Innova for a couple hundred grand anymore. It's uh it's a lot more money involved in selling discs. And the pros are getting more of it now. When they good. have their own lines, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean and signature discs and their own line is huge. Yeah, uh, the tour the tour disc, right? Everyone has a tour disc to help yeah. them tour. That's what it's there for. But who had a, their own line before Paul had his line? Who had their own line before Paul? Had their manufacturer make a line just for them. Like we're making a new mold. This is your this is your series, like the Paul Macbeth series. No one. No one. It just started. Yeah. And he sold and is selling a hell of a lot. Um yeah. Six times, I they didn't really sell like you thought they would. Um, well, there's still some this, in there. This can go into our next topic for next week, which we can save. Is the the flooding of the mar- the market being flooded with discs and from specifically Discraft right now? I'm gonna say the market got flooded by fucking Innova because they seriously have every single mold quadruple yeah, down. Yeah, and we, we, we've, I've they talked about They won't make the ones people are begging for. I know. But they'll just keep giving you new ones to say, it's a new disc you need to try. Yep. Give the people yep. what they want. About Give that us that old people. run. Yep. Yeah, talked about that with people recently as well. Like, why did the racer need to exist? Why did the charger and need to exist? Half of them. Yep. Half of them. Right, well, let's come up with the, the alien. That's going to sell. Yeah. So I had a little gimmicky disc, but yeah. come on. Come yeah, on. we can talk to you, Disc Mania. I am now throwing Warlocks because you can make the extra soft logics. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that next week. We'll save that for next right. week. We'll talk about discs, the market, you know, what it looks like, and, you know, what I've heard from retailers and things like that. Because I think it's cool. very interesting where we're at now. Yeah, it is. Um, and suffice to say, I'm glad I finally got my bag honed in because if, if I hadn't done that, the way the market is, like especially like this last year, I'd be completely lost. Yeah, trying to keep up with this that came out. I do something similar to something I already had. Yeah, but yeah, I'll save that for for the conversation. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll take that one in the next week. Up. Uh, I don't have anything coming up the next week. Ledgestone is coming up though, right? Ledgestone is coming up. Yep. Yeah, a lot of talk. People traveling, people making plans for Ledgestone. So. That yeah. one is coming up. That's always an exciting event. They're playing four rounds of Eureka Lake this year. No Northwoods. Because they don't want to use the same course twice. Because because President's Cup was at Northwoods already this year. But they only played two rounds there? Nope. They played all four. They did? Yep. Damn. I mean, I like I, I like the mix. Honestly, yeah. But if we yeah. do that. So the ladies play what? That's a good question. I don't know. Because they played uh, the you know, the golf course one. Yeah. Um, sun. Sunset. So, so, no, yeah, they played no, Sunset. No, no, no. Is it Sunset? Or Sunset in Vegas? Sunset's in Vegas. No. No? Sunset oh. is, is there. Okay. It's the one on, on the ball golf course. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. I, I played on that one. It was super remember? cool. Yeah. You met me like halfway. Yeah, it was super um, cool. Yeah, they played that and Northwoods, and the men played Eureka and Northwoods, oh, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's usually what they yeah, do. Yeah, that's the way it was working. So, yeah, I have to figure out what the ladies are doing. Yeah, I don't know. What's actually. their layout? Well, we're closing it out, so we don't have time, but well, I'm going to look it up. For say, well, while you reason. Google it, I will tell everyone our out. actionables, our like, Ding. share, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, l- yeah, let us know what you think about Manufacturer Cup, who, who the best manufacturer is right now in terms of talent. And, you know, keep telling us how your weekly leagues are going. We love hearing it. How your tournament season's going. How you're win- If you're winning leagues, if you're not winning leagues, what's going on in your local courses. Let us know. It's fun to read the comments. 
and messages and everything I get from people. So it's really cool. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks Don't for listening. Ding. Where are they playing? Did you find it? Uh, I have the course scheduled. Oh, let's hear it. FPO is Pool B, Sunset. Sunset, okay. Pool B, Sunset. Saturday, pool, they're playing Sunset, all four. Yeah. Yeah. Eureka Temp for the MPO and Sunset for the ladies, all four. It'll be different this year, but it's it, they're good courses, so no complaints. Do you remember anything called Three Sisters? I don't remember No, that. I don't remember that at all. That, it's that, for the for the other groups. Yeah. Pool E. Pool remember, E is M A forty. Okay. I remember McNaughton. Oh, they got some new fun. ones. Okay. They got some new ones. Yeah, they got three sisters. Um North or uh, three sisters, Maxwell Park, okay. Washington Park, hmm. ICC, Wildlife, DGC, Youth Acres. I've heard of Wildlife. I remember that one. I remember McNaughton. McNaughton and I remember Westwood. And Kennel Lake. And Kennel Lake, they're still there. Kennel Lake was sick. That that's a temp yeah. course. It's so cool. Yeah, so I they, think that's you... the one I practiced, and then they moved me yeah. in divisions, yeah. and I had to play the one that I didn't get to practice, which was either Westwood or Kennel. I think it was Westwood. Yeah, I think it was. So I had to play that one blind, but oh well, it was fun. Yeah, Maybe definitely, a, day. definitely an event worth going to. A lot of lot of yeah, fun courses sure. in that area. So, with that, all right, we will close it out for the week. Catch you guys next week. Yep. Yep. Take it easy, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.